Hey, Redcasters, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Go Big Red. I struggle, I struggle to project how this team is going to be when I feel like the teaching, the development, the coaching, the change in philosophy can really make a big impact on what I didn't view as horrible players. And we've added a few good players. Yeah. What if Jeff Sims is okay? What what if we got it? You know what is he six four? We've said Two, it. Third. We've said it from day one of this off season was that a developmental program, which is what Coach Rule said he wanted to be from from the start, a developmental program in 2023 looks like what this off season has been. Mm. If you're going to bring guys in from the portal, you're going to bring them in in January and they're going to be here the whole dang time. Sure, sure. We've had one transfer as far as I can as far as I can remember. Correct me if I'm wrong here. We've had one transfer in post spring, and that was that Nat kid. The uh, the offensive tackle from Utah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So most of the guys, anybody that we're going to be counting on, there's no Oshan Mathis's in this group of guys that just got here or Devin right. Drews they are going to get here in August. Or, you know, well, there's Steven, not yet, though. Stephen he, he, he even kind of said something about, well, we'll see. That somebody could come in this late yeah. still? Well, well, he was talking about, you know, his recruiting class and how well it's going. And people are saying, you know, oh, yeah, but you got to keep him coming. He's like, well, yeah, I know. We, we got to keep, but, you know, we're going to go after some guys too. Like, yeah. I'm like oh, that. yeah. I'm just talking about guys that are going to be playing when we play against Minnesota. I'm saying those guys are guys that have been here since January. Oh, I'm with you. I'm with yeah, you. We're, I'm not, we're not playing guys that, that are just getting here kind of thing. Um, and I think that's important there. You know, Eric here says, my hope with Rule's reputation as a developer is that our fall off between the ones down to the twos and threes isn't a surmountable gap when injuries do happen. And that's absolutely true. And I also think part of that, Eric, is that the, the team that – we see play against Minnesota in late August needs to be a different team than the one we see play against Iowa on black Friday. Like that development that you've got to be a much better team. You've got to see players develop over the Mm -hmm. course of a season Mm because there's going to be an injury and there could be a there's on game game one. There can be a gap between player number one, player number two, but by, by game four and then by game eight, that gap has to be lessened. These guys that, that gets back to practice. And I want to play a video here of Coach Rule talking about practice today and talking about uh, kind of doing some of the things that what we were doing under the okay. Osborne and Devaney and all that with stations, making sure that a lot of guys are getting out there. So here's a practice. We have a little bit larger roster than, than I've had at other places I've been. And so really practicing in the ways that Coach Devaney, Coach Osborne, Coach Solich did for 42 years of really dominance, um, having multiple stations, multiple drills going on, a lot like we practiced at Penn State, but I hadn't done that for many years, and getting back to it this spring has been really good for us. And and um, so I think that's maybe not about the Big Ten; it's just more about being at Nebraska. You know, I'd be a fool if I didn't ask Coach Osborne what the blueprint is. And uh, he's been, you know, he doesn't talk about plays; he talks about the way they practice first and foremost. The blueprint of Nebraska football. It's not mm-hmm. about plays. Mm-hmm. And look at me; I'm a huge option guy, right? I've always been an you option love the guy. Option. You love the fullback. The option isn't Nebraska football, and, and plays aren't Nebraska football. It's it's being a physical style. It's mm-hmm. how you practice. It's 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 the philosophy of being a four quarter team playing smart football, yeah. not beating yourself. I've listened to Osborne over the years give different talks about mm-hmm. the goals that they would set from week to week, and the goal was never to beat the opponent. You never that wasn't the goal. The goal right. was, you know, in preseason we love to get into these. What is uh what what's their score or what's your record going to be? Are you going to go nine and three or ten and two or whatever? Osborne wasn't about right. you know, what's the record going to be. Um, you set goals, achievable goals, but but high standing goals of hey, we want to get this many yards per carry. We want to have this. We want to win the uh, turnover battle right. by this amount. We want to have net punting, th- net punting guess, field yeah. position. And if we do these things, if we reach these goals, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten, or maybe in his case, I guess two hundred and 55 times out of 25 years, nice. you're going to win games <laughs> yeah. if, you, if you can reach those goals. And if you don't, then you literally can clap as the team goes by because nice. God bless them. Very nice. You know, and, you know, if they can beat you while you still reach those goals. And so the goals that that I think Coach Rule's talking about here and, and wanting to do, he talks about the day-by-day and the details matter. Mm-hmm. I do have a video with that too, but the it's the fact that we've got to get better every single day. We're not good enough right now to be talking about – you know, going 10 and 2 or 9 and well, 3. Well, yeah, that's we just, almost why I don't worry about the backups being that big of a drop off. Let's worry about our starters first. You know, I, well, don't, I don't even know. That's true. Some I mean, of these young guys might be pretty good. You know, we'll see. 
um, I think I'll, I think we're going to see a lot of guys play, and I hope we do. I mean, that, that seems to make the most sense. Let's let's see what we got on the on the roster. I just want to see us play well, you know. And and just like Rule said, we know what well looks like. You know, we know what fundamental football looks like. You know what when a team isn't beating itself. And I would I could go for a season of that. Well, we know what looks we know what it looks like to be up ten nothing on Minnesota at halftime. We, we did that last year. Yeah. We also know what it looks like to give up a second half lead yeah. and lose. And those are the things that, that right away, as you go to August 30th or mm -hmm. 31st and in week one, is that can we get ahead of Minnesota? Of course we can. Do you, do you have any doubts that this team can get a lead on them? I, I think we can get a lead on Minnesota. Yes, I absolutely do. In my based even off of, of based even off of yes. just based off of recency bias. <laughs> you know, we can get a lead on Minnesota. Can we keep a lead on them? Mm -hmm. That's the thing that that's the, the the details. Can we get it beat out of the kids? Essentially, mm -hmm. you know that that whatever those the bad voodoo was. Whatever isn't it, it was. Funny, isn't it funny how people assume that the, the the previous coaching staff lingers with the program? Like the turnovers would only go away if this coaching staff would go away. You know, or is it the players? Or you know, like it's just kind of funny how we just. But or the, the coaching staff does get fired, but this team has a problem with turnovers. Well, why? That coach is gone. This is a totally different team. 